Hey everybody, what's going on? Welcome to the Nobody's Happy Podcast. Uh, I'm here with uh, the one and only Joshua J. Cabizzle. Hello. <coughs> and uh, George just said he was on his way. I think he's lying to you. All right. Well, <coughs> in either case. Uh, Don't believe him. We're here. I uh, just put out the uh, the podcast today or yesterday, last night. I've been I've been trying to uh, I'm going to headline the improv. This will probably be out afterwards. Yeah. Um, just for one night, Rob Schneider had to drop out and uh, old faithful over here. And they're like, "Who's like Rob Schneider? Who's exactly. like Rob Schneider?" And put out the bad signal. <laughs> This stapler is just a stapler. <laughs> Bro, if you're going to go out there and be like, yeah, I'm in the improv. The improv plays. Hey, man, I think, I don't know. I think I can compete with Rob Schneider. Like, if they put us both back to back, like 20 minutes each. Oh, yeah. Yeah, of course. Well, on stand up, 100%. I think you'd wipe the floor with him. On, but on, on movies, <clears throat> uh, on just being famous and known, Deuce Bigelow would wipe the floor with you. That motherfucker made a huge fucking career. I like like yep. out of nowhere, right? All of a sudden Rob Schneider was a fucking well, dude. I think Chris Farley was supposed to have that career. And of course Chris Farley didn't move on. So who was the next one in line for another him? SNL guy that's Rob well known. And yep. But he was funny on SNL, no? He played like weird characters and a lot of times he played the straight character. All right. Because then even in his movies, he's not being like weird. He's being Rob Schneider. Well, I take it back. If it's an Adam Sandler movie, you know, the, you can do it. He plays some of those guys. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he was a, uh, no, the you can do it. And 51st Dates. I thought that was Steve Buscemi. No. Uh-uh. It is? No, you don't remember that? Hold on. Did but I Steve get Buscemi does have a lot of, uh. Steve Buscemi's having sex with, he's the cross-eyed guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, uh, okay. But he says something on, uh. On uh, what's the one? Ta- uh, Water Boy. Oh, oh, is it Water Boy? Oh, Water Boys, you can do it. Right? <coughs> That's what I said, right? Water Boy. I think so. Yeah. That's Rob he, Schneider. He says you can do it. I thought it was uh, Steve Buscemi. Oh no, I think you're right. Yeah. Yeah, it is him. It's a young Rob Schneider. Did you know he was uh, Polynesian or something like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't know that. And he's got a daughter, a daughter, really beautiful daughter, a daughter who is like uh, a singer. No, uh, I don't know if she's a singer, but I yeah, he's got a singer, put up Rob Schneider's singer daughter or something like that. Daughter, Rob Schneider's. Uh, yeah, L. L. King. L. King. Holy shit. It's a dope name. Yeah, I could see the resemblance. She looks like. Um, a little bit like, uh, what's her name from Fifty First Dates? Oh, yeah. <laughs> right? She kind of looks like her there. Yeah. After she climbed out of the tub of acid. <laughs> oh, I love her name. <laughs> Damn it, what is her fucking name? I'm uh, looking up right now. Drew Barrymore. I was going to say Strawberry. <laughs> Strawberry Barrymore. <laughs> yeah, see, look at Drew Barrymore here. And then we look at his daughter. It's yeah, a little bit. A little yeah. bit similar. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, I think you can follow Rob Schneider for sure. Yeah, so hopefully some of his fans will trickle in too. Uh, it's not. I have. Ch- I checked it. They just told me about it yesterday, but I don't see a fucking. Uh, a thing online. No, not yet. Yeah, Rob I- Schneider's still online. I th- I think they they gotta well I gotta wait for them to confirm. No, that's smart. Keep Rob Schneider up there all week. Then the last minute you pull it and then it's you, and people already bought tickets, and then they look up like a few of your clips and like oh he's funny all right I watch. Oh yeah, I mean I just uh, now I just got an email. Uh huh. Hey Jesse, can you add Raul Sanchez to Houston Saturday April first? Uh, two shows. Please provide link once this is live. Yeah, so once the link is uh, up, I can uh, put out some Facebook ads maybe. Yeah. 
see if uh, people will come out and uh, just use famous check people's it out. photos. Like put, like put, I'm gonna put Louis C.K. Put your name, yeah, yeah. Louis C.K.'s K's picture, and I'll put your favorite Mexican is coming to <laughs> <laughs> to the improv, and then put a very small picture of yourself in the corner, <laughs> on the corner with your name, like in that movie The Net, where it's like a little fucking thing on the corner that you click. What movie is that? Sandra Bullock. I don't remember. It was San- one of Sandra Bullock's first like uh, big movies, The Net. Did Sandra Bullock ever do nudity? No, she's too classy for it. And man, there's some uh, movies where she's got a banging body. Oh yeah, Miss Congeniality. Miss Congeniality, I think yeah. this one. Like, yeah, the shot in San Antonio. She's got beautiful hips and and a little waist. Yep, yep. She was always a pretty pretty lady. Uh, my dad has a story about her. Mm. Just like, yeah, or he said that, that he ran into her into the elevator. Mm. And it was just her when she was recording in San Antonio. Mm. I was like, "Did you say anything?" He's like, "No." I was like, "So you were in the elevator with Sandra Bullock." What happened? Well, you know, I got on and she got off and that was it. I was like, that's your whole story about Sandra Bullock? It's like, yeah, have you ever met her? And I was like, oh, fuck, I haven't. You're you right. didn't even upskirt a shot of... <laughs> <laughs> you didn't try to leave mom for her dad? What's wrong with you? His excuse was... Because he, he, he's the type of person who runs into famous people all the time. I've never run into David Robinson. He's ran into David Robinson twice. Oh, yeah. And he's just visiting. So it's like, how do you that always? And I was like, well, he's like, these are just people, son. And they don't want to be bothered. Just you go about your business. That is a good mentality to have, though. Yeah. But I think it's more of a fear of like, there's no way I'm going to have them be like, don't talk to me. Actually, that's probably the main reason I would never talk. I, I didn't talk to Bill Burr when yeah. I was in New York because I saw him. He was sitting there like from from me to you. Yeah. Uh, but to me, my, my thing has always been like, number one, like your dad, like the, he, they probably don't want to be bothered. Yeah. And two, that would sting so bad. Yeah. If you're like, hey, man, I just want to say, like, hey, dude, can you just give me a second? I think that means somebody in y'all's lives when you went to go, like, let's say a girl to talk to them. And they're like, hey, this dude's trying to hit on me or something like that. Something like that had to happen. Yeah, it's called the getting rejected at the border. Oh, yeah. And then ever since then, being afraid of rejection. <laughs> <laughs> being afraid to It's a pretty big rejection. The whole country rejected To you. get turned away. Yeah, dude. A whole fu- uh, hundreds of millions of people. Bitch, I'll fight for you. Tell How about me that? no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then I overcompensated. <laughs> like a fucking simp. <laughs> You're like, fine, you can be here, but you can't hear very well now. I was simping for <laughs> U.S. Hemogenem... He- 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 what is it? Hegemony? Mm. Homogeny. Homogeny. <laughs> I don't even know what that word means. Yeah, it means like you control all the bullshit. Oh, okay. It means cool. you're the big boss, big dick in town. Oh. Which is now coming to bite the U.S. in the ass because mm-hmm. they've been treating the entire world like shit. Mm-hmm. They've been pissing on everybody and telling them to I call know. it. R- it's it's and telling them it's raining. Mexico, Mexico right now. Uh, first of all, Lindsey Graham, fucking idiot, is talking about we should make the cartels. Uh, 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 what's it called? A terrorist organization and go fight them. Yeah, I'm like you shut the fuck. I don't up. think I don't think they would do that, but it's definitely like something like, like posturing. Like Mexico, don't forget. But you know why they? he yeah, were thugs. Said, well, this is why I think he's saying it because Mexico just asked to join the BRICS nations. Oh yeah, we were talking yeah. about that the other day. Even yeah. though we weren't quite exactly sure as to what that entailed, they use that currency. Right. Yeah. But I mean, like, what's the the? Well, I guess they're using the Chinese dollar. Or well, okay, Chinese so yuan. if you're part, it'd be like uh, okay, um, the way people join the the UN or whatever, the G seven or whatever organization. Explain this in dick sucking terms. In dick sucking terms. All right. So, <laughs> so America is used to getting their dick sucked raw, right? But now Not everybody nobody gets their dick sucked with a condom. That's what's gonna happen. It's a flavored brick condom, <laughs> and you and we have to put that on. And and here's the trick: there's VD on the inside of that, and we don't even know. Oh, yeah. but as long as the we stay protected. See, here's wait, the problem though: the, the is bricks the condom. The or? dollar's falling, so I don't even think we'll be able to get it up. I think <laughs> <laughs> so it doesn't matter. 
<laughs> the dollar's a little limp right now. Uh, yeah, yeah. The, the dollar had a couple of whiskeys, and now you know, give it a minute. Yeah, yeah. We, I mean, we're injecting a bunch of stuff into it, and it's still not working <laughs> right. Oh, uh, we, we got Harvey Weinstein dick now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the problem is, actually, people think it's just going to go down. <laughs> it's actually going to pop, and then we just won't be able to use it again. We're going to have to get a new uh, dick. We'll just get it inverted. It was like, well, now we're, uh, we identify. <laughs> <laughs> now you got to come in us. Now you got to fuck us. <laughs> Yeah, you have to buy our 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 exports. That's what it means. Yesterday, I did a joke about uh, being an immigrant, uh-huh. uh, like the uniqueness of of being because uh, there's like two cultures, right? It's like Mexican culture and Mexican American culture, which are different. And then there's Tex Mex culture, right? Well, it's subsidiary, but um, uh, there's a third major culture, which is Mexicans living in the United States that are not citizens. Uh-huh. And then I talk about a story about having to translate a fight between my mom and their neighbor lady. Uh, and that one worked out good, man. I can't wait to that a true story? that shit out. Yeah, I mean, it's it's based on a true story. Yeah. You know, but obviously there's action like a movie. You know, but the, yeah, my mom did one time have me uh, translate uh, to, to like telling off a fucking lady uh-huh, uh-huh. when I was a Fuck kid. you, bitch. Okay, what else? <laughs> yes, dude, it was fucking hilarious. It actually, it, it was, it was, hit, it hit pretty, uh, pretty well. I liked it. But the point is, it's true. There is a, uh, a third Mexican culture of, uh, mm-hmm. of Mexicans with Mexican culture, but now living in the states as immigrants, and now you got a weird half breed of. Mexican and Mexican American culture, which is basically just black. Culture. And what's weird is a lot of the Mexican people that I know that moved over, and I got family too that's like this, where it's just like, hey man, too many people are coming over. Like, hey, you guys are gonna ruin a good thing. You need to stop. You need to stop coming <laughs> over. You know, I'm hey, like they're pulling. It's called pulling up the ladder after you. Yes, <laughs> yes. I'm like, what? What are you guys talking about? Because, but you know what? And, and it's because it's the. I'm talking specifically about the valley. Yeah, but it's weird because you don't need to have citizenship to even live there in the valley. I mean, yeah. you do, but you don't. You know what I mean? Yeah, because you could just go around. Everybody speaks the same language. But also, you're not crossing that the the checkpoint inside the real border. The real checkpoint. Yes, correct. So you get to live in the in between world. The uh, the whites only uh, <laughs> checkpoint. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Where the whole test is, they're hearing for an accent. Yeah, <laughs> they're just waiting to see if you fuck up. Yeah, if you uh, flinch, <laughs> high school or whatever fucking place they ask you, you go to. Are you, uh, the whole test is: Are you an American citizen? Yes. Yeah. Continue. That's uh, I remember uh talking about. That's how we crossed over, where uh my parents' friend uh cousins or something like that, they crossed me and my sister over, and they just coached us on telling them. Yes what elementary school we went to yeah. but since it's laredo texas it wouldn't be out of character for us to just speak spanish no but i remember the the dude just poked his head in and he just said are those your kids he goes yeah and he goes all right yeah they're not gonna they're, they're not <clears throat> they're not gonna grill a fucking you know a seven-year-old and a four-year-old no they're looking for drugs at that time yeah yeah but apparently now they're uh you need passport and everything. It's it's not just drugs. It's like actual wa- waves of human beings mm-hmm. just rushing across, and basically like. But from all over, from Haiti, using the China, same everywhere. using the same protection as uh as zebras, is like they're gonna get somebody, yeah. but they can't get all of us. And if we just run in a group, yeah, some of us are gonna get away. Yeah. Damn, dude, that's so fucking crazy. To ever make? Did you ever see that? Uh, what's that one? Uh. Where they have that song Mexican American, it's Cheech trying to cross back into America. Oh yeah, and yeah. And they're like holding hands as they come down the hill and shit like that. Uh, I don't, I, I don't remember. Uh, I always the th- song, but I remember Cheech going Mexican American. I do. I don't know why that plays in my head, and then I see him coming over the hill. But what if that's like not even? I don't, I didn't watch the rest of the movie. But what if that's like, all right, we got here. It's like another five hundred miles <laughs> that they gotta go. Yeah, that's exactly how it is too. <laughs> It happened to us in Afghanistan. Every time you would climb a mountain, yeah. you'd hit the peak, and there's a bigger mountain behind it. And you're like, how the fuck can you not see an even bigger mountain behind this thing until you get to the summit? <laughs> the earth is round. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, talk about finding out the earth is round. It's round and cold as fuck oh. at that height. You can see the clouds coming at you. Oh, that's, that's how fucking wild it was. That's beautiful and cold at the 
big time. I remember I used to sit on a on a mountain in Afghanistan and think about the pastor's daughter. So you just be sitting in Afghanistan with a boner? With a dick. <laughs> 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 you think it's true that they put stuff in the food to make you not get hard? No, dude. No. That's just, uh, that was an old myth. Yeah. I remember them saying that in basic training. Yeah, yeah. Hey, they were like, hey, did you know they, they put, so there was the eggs. They yeah. would say, you know, they put something in the eggs so that you can't get hard. Yeah. And I'd be like, why would they do that? And he's like, so we don't fuck each other. Because <laughs> <laughs> if the army fucks each other, we're all literally fucked. Because listen, unless somebody puts some kind of a... a a safety mechanism on my dick. I want to start <laughs> pounding everybody here. <laughs> Man, your already chastity belt. <laughs> you got to pick it's like, it up. We're not even in prison, dude. Jesus Christ. Because <laughs> in prison, I would understand fucking each other. <laughs> <laughs> listen, the point is two months is all I got in me. <laughs> and then I'm starting to fuck. And then I'm getting in you. All right. <laughs> two months. And we can trade after that, but <laughs> I got to go first. <laughs> Except you, not you. <laughs> <laughs> to establish dominance. <laughs> oh, my God. That was a long time ago, dude. I'm 38. No, 39. Mm -hmm. that, was that was 20 years ago. 20 years ago. Dude. More than half. You've lived more on this half of your life than that half of your life. You know what I mean? Yeah. I've been an adult longer than I was a child. <laughs> 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 Pretty much. That's what it means. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> It's going to be crazy when we get to the point where we've been doing stand-up the majority of our life. Jesus. I'll tell you what's going to be crazy is when we're seeing other... What, well, no, now it's crazy. When I see other kids in uniform mm -hmm. and just think like, holy shit, at the San Antonio airport. I was yeah. like, I remember going into this airport mm -hmm. to go to Georgia so we can go do our fucking basic training. And now I see them and they look like just Children. young as fuck. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I'm like, holy shit, now I'm that old guy. And I thought, how many, like, weird moments of, like, Vietnam vets that probably saw me in a group of buzz cut idiots getting in, in a thing. And the dude probably all in civilian fucking beard and just looking yeah. at us going, like, circle of life. Yep. Do you know what? Vietnam vets are the only ones I see with a hat. I never see any other, any other like, time where they, you know. Well, I'm, the other ones are dead, more th mostly. Which is the Korean War people. Right. Uh, There's Korean no World War because they're dead. Yeah. And what do we have between Vietnam? Iraq. Uh, a bunch of small uh, conflicts. Yeah. We never really went to war after that. I mean, technically, Vietnam, we didn't go to war. 94? What was that? That was Desert Storm? Yeah, no, it was, that was 91. 91, yeah, yeah. That was Desert Storm. And that one was over so fucking quick. They barely had enough footage of it. Hey, they made a good movie out of it. Jarhead. <coughs> was it a good movie? Jake Gyllenhaal, you didn't like it? I didn't I didn't see it. That's why I'm, I'm genuinely asking. Did you think it was a good movie? Yeah, but I'm looking at it from the outside since I was never in the military. Oh, sure. But as, in terms of movies, as far as movies, like you, I wasn't in World War II, but I yeah. can tell Saving Private Ryan was a fucking it hell of a like movie. It seemed like it was just the whole thing was just a mind fuck. Oh, uh, okay, yeah. It but it was, it was a good, like, thriller type of... Uh, no, for me, it was just like, I, oh, I looked at it, <laughs> Were eyes. you thrilled? You weren't thrilled? No, because it's not like it's not like a, a war. It was just a guy who went to war and he was there like a couple weeks and went through training and it's just like the 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 bullshit that he goes through. He gets drunk over there. They make him drink a bunch of water and clean the toilets. You know, yeah, that, yeah. that type of stuff. <laughs> but it made me think also because they he he goes that they go all right. Take these pills. They're using mustard gas. We don't want you guys to die. And the guy goes, "What's in the pill?" And he goes, shut the fuck, just Jamie Foxx, just take the pill. And so everybody takes the pill except that one guy, he, like, throws it behind him and, like, chugs, right? Yeah. And so you know how they said a, a lot of those guys came back oh. crazy, right? And so my uncle was one of them, right? My aunt got married. He came back. He was a t completely different dude. Yeah. Really? So I was looking at it. I was just like, oh, shit, is that why? So the uh, the it's Agent Orange or some shit, right? Or some no, no, they wouldn't <laughs> give it to you in pill form. <laughs> <laughs> They gave them all Agent Orange in the mouth. They used to scatter the Agent Orange pills <laughs> all over the fucking forest. <laughs> like, hopefully these motherfuckers will eat them. No, um, well, I guess it was a pretty uh, human aspect of, of the war. Yeah. But now that you're telling me that, they kind of, like, say that they, the government itself might have caused some of this. 
uh, they they allude, like craziness they, or they, they, PTSD. They, they allude to it. They allude but, to it, but it, they're not. They don't say it outright. Right, right, right. The one part that got me was there's a, a building right, and they're about to snipe this guy. It's Jake Gyllenhaal, and the other guy's watching with the binoculars. And right before they snipe him, some general or whatever comes in. Not general, but somebody higher ranking comes in and was like, "Stop, stop, don't do that." And they call in an airstrike, and the guy's like, "Come on, you're gonna airstrike it. Just let us shoot the guy. Let yeah. us get our kill." I want my kill. Let me get my kill. Yeah. Because they're about to kick that guy out of the army because he lied. He had like a felony or something. Oh, shit. And so he was like, just let us get the kill. And he's like, like he's screaming at the guy, right? And he wants to like fight him. Yeah. And they're like, dude, what the? And the guy's like, what the fuck did they do to you guys? Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it just shows up and it blows up like the building across. Damn, that's crazy. Like that they had bloodlust because another guy um, uh, shoots a camel. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah. He just wanted to shoot something. Yeah, yeah. And then there was, like, a dead Iraqi person, and and he's, like, playing with the body and stuff. And they're like, oh, this guy's wrong. whacked out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, shit, dude. There was, I remember one time we went uh, to Iraq, and we didn't really see anything. Like, we were in, we were just kind of guarding the first yeah. deployment to Iraq. Uh, and there was a lot of that, like the angstiness of like, you train a bunch of dudes how to fucking go kill and fuck shit up. Yeah. And then you put them on a guard post and you're just like, like, dude, I'm amped the fuck up. You yeah. know, like I thought we were coming out here to see some action. Yeah. Specifically you guys though. Cause you like uh, infantry guys. Yeah. yeah that's yeah, what yeah. I'm saying. <clears throat> and then, but then the second deployment, they were like, all you can handle, bro. <laughs> oh, for and real? then after and then after that everybody was like man it's kind of sucks to be in out here like i just want to be in a which one was that afghanistan or iraq 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 was where we got into a uh, firefight because it's cities right you yeah know? oh well i mean yeah the cities and uh i guess iraq was a lot more easier to blend in to yeah, yeah i guess you're right because of the urban areas and afghanistan is just fucking mountains so you see you know, five guys in pajamas going up and down with AKs, you know, running kinda up easy mountains. To sp yeah, it's kind of easy to spot in Iraq. It, it's, you know, they just, they can shoot, dump the fucking weapon, and then just walk around like everybody else. Who was the one telling? It was Edward's brother. He goes that the Iraq was a bunch of, like, think of uh, frat boy college kids, but from other countries coming to Iraq just so they can pick up an AK and shoot <coughs> over a car at people. Right, and right. And say that they did it. Yeah. So that he goes, that's who, that's a lot of the people we're fighting. These these were like, they were in other countries, college students, dudes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm like, get the fuck I out. I mean, fucking, uh, what's his dick? Uh, wasn't Bin Laden like a college-educated fool? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why'd you do it like that? <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! You, you hang up with Felipe Esparza one time, <laughs> right? And all of a sudden, I'm saying food. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What was it called? That was food? pretty badass, though. Yeah. Hanging out with uh, Felipe. I don't know he was vegan. Uh, he has to, you know, doesn't drink. Actually, I'm starting to realize the key to being a successful comedian is you don't drink, mm -hmm. you don't do uh, any drugs other than weed. I just think you can't. That was pretty dope, though. You can't. That's what I think ends up happening. You, we, you just do it. You drink and do all that shit so long that it's just like your body's like, yo, you got to pick. You have a show tomorrow or you're going to get drunk tonight and you're not going to that tomorrow. Right. Yeah. I mean, there's bigger stakes. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm guessing that all that money will definitely motivate you to like, but hey, also, maybe I take it easy tonight. It's easier, too, when you if you got that type of money, you're like, all right, I want to I want somebody to cook my meals for me. So just give me my meal. I don't even have to think about it. We had a vegan food truck just posted up right behind the theater. Specifically for him. Yeah, I mean they were shooting a uh, uh like a uh, like something that they want to pitch. Yeah. Uh, for uh, like a food type of thing. Yeah. But yeah, I mean he just had a, a whole fucking vegan uh food truck right behind, right outside the theater. It's pretty dope. <clears throat> I I, I understand the vegan thing. part. Like, hey, don't eat the... I don't understand, though. Like, now you're getting, like, let me make it... Gr I'm going to grow this thing in a Petri dish. Oh, you mean like, uh, like, uh, what is it called? I can't believe it's not meat or something. Yeah, what is it called? Beyond Meat. And <laughs> yeah, Beyond like Meat. <laughs> I'm just like, nah, I'm going to go with the tube meat. I'm not... Yeah, there's something so icky about, yeah, like, uh, 
that somebody put like a uh, a little drop of some liquid and then just this thing started going. Yeah, 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 yeah. kill me. Which is weird because a mushroom. I'll eat a mushroom, and I know and that's basically a lot of dude the mushrooms. Uh, I I found out that mushrooms are more related to humans than they are to plants. Huh. Look right. that up, man. It, I'm pretty sure it says well, fungus. I got a mushroom head. You got. That's true, right? I mean, it's one of my favorite it's, parts. It's uncanny, hey, isn't it? In Mario Brothers, here, baby, you wanna they, you wanna open up your third eye, baby? Put this mushroom. When in they de evolve, they either de evolve to like a reptile or a mushroom. Wait, who? In did you ever see Mario Brothers with uh, who was in it? Uh, John Leguizamo was Luigi. Are you talking about the live action movie yeah, yeah, yeah. or the Bro- Mario Brothers? Yeah, 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 dude. They had, a a de- they had a de evolve gun, but when you de evolve, you either de evolved into a reptile or a mushroom. No, fair. Like the main fair king enough. turned into like a huge mushroom. Fair enough. I mean, that's why uh, I keep. Uh, I think they they say that uh, that mushrooms may have been like brought over here by a fucking asteroid. Uh, we are nearly 100% alike as humans and equally closely related to mushrooms. What the fuck? Wait. We are also likely to call a mushroom a plant, whereas genetic comparisons place fungi closer to man than to plants. In other words, the DNA in fungi more closely resembles the DNA of the inhabitants of the animal kingdom. We are nearly 100% alike as humans and equally closely related to mushrooms. Okay, well... Okay, maybe that's what it meant. Like, it's more related to an an animal than it is to a plant. They build soils, and without fungi, we wouldn't have food. Stem has explained that humans share nearly 50% of their DNA with fungi, and we contract many of the same viruses as fungi. It can get herpes? Ah! Did we evolve from fungi? <clears throat> no, dude, fungi. I'm. T- I think fungi is is not even f- from this planet. No. Yeah, I think they came here on an asteroid. Super Mario Brothers. <laughs> I think they came here on an asteroid. And it's just like this, this half plant, half man thing. Apparently, more man than plant. See, uh, okay, so this is the king, mm-hmm. right here, and they de evolve him into like some mushroom fungus thing. Oh, see, I don't even remember this part. No, no. And then the other ones get de-evolved to these guys. Ding, 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 ding. Ding, 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 ding. Just go back and watch it. Uh, I don't think it was uh, that impressive. He was he. Uh, I for, well, I when forget, I was a kid, I, I f- doubt it's gonna hold up. I forgot his name. Oh no, it's great. I forgot his name, but he was just like talking about he didn't know when he accepted the movie what it was and so his kids are like no like the video game and they showed him the video game and he's like i used to play king leah oh no (laughs) yeah wait was he a british guy yeah he's british no that guy's british yeah yeah. i always thought he was a a a fucking american dude from the bronx or no he's just that good of an actor wow Oh, tip of the hat to that guy, man. I'm Fuck. Gonna, I'm gonna look up his name right now. I've seen him in other movies too. His name man. is Bob Hoskins. Hoskins. Wow. Bob Hoskins. I've seen him in other movies, but I uh oh he was who framed Roger Rabbit. Yeah. In a hook. Yep. Wow. Holy shit. And why is he with this fucking he was, hot he blonde? He was Schmeagel. Right? In Hook. Is it Schmeagel his name? Yes. Yes. Yeah. It's not, I don't think it's Schmeagel. It's Smitty. Schmitty. Uh, he oh he Merman. died. Merman, he uh, was in Mermaids. He he was he was yeah. From oh, that's the sequel to Mermaid, right? From Bury Saint Edmund, United Kingdom. Holy fuck, man! Yeah, he was in a bunch of good movies. Yeah, Who Framed Roger? He was the main guy in Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Yeah. And you know what? He I don't remember that dude ever looking like like a young hot. He wasn't. Ever. Like he was always like such a good uh. He played Nikita Khrushchev in uh, Enemy at the Gates. Holy fuck. Like, he was always a fat, bald guy that just but was he wasn't such even, a good actor. He's not even fat. Look. Watch. He was chubby, dude. I mean, like, he was never, like, But, I mean, the early thin. 90s? That's, he's stocky on that one. Yeah. Matter of fact, I'm pretty sure that they, uh, 
CG photo Photoshop that's that shit. That's Denzel. Heart condition. Oh shit. Hey, if it's got Denzel, man, I'm all, I'm all in. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> what is that? You put it in. Now you take it out. What is it? It's a dildo. Oh, nice. I remember having a VHS movie that would have uh, trailers at the beginning. Yeah. And this was one of them. All all they would show was him putting that dildo in front of the uh, the nurse. Uh huh. And it would say, "You put it in. Now you take it out." Put it in what? I don't know. See, put heart condition. You put it in. Now you take it out. Scene. Oh, that was up here. Yeah. I don't think it's going to show the, the scene. Oh, maybe it will. It's a trailer. I think it's in that. Oh, no. Yeah, there you go. Hit that. Hit that. You want me to play it? Yeah, okay, okay, if we can hear it. I can fucking play it. Uh, it's not. Not letting me. <coughs> All right, well, it's not that fucking important. <coughs> oh, talk about it's only the a dildo. childhood memory. Talk about the dildo. Heart condition. Heart zondition. <laughs> you put oh. it in. But you put it in. Man, YouTube has everything. Oh, except that. <clears throat> well, maybe it's in the trailer. I don't know. I don't know what's that. Do you remember this movie? Yeah, it's not that. Uh, nothing but trouble. Yeah. Oh my God! I think I do. With Dan Aykroyd. Yes. Yeah. And it, they live in this fucking mansion where these creepy fucking people. Yeah. And he's a judge. Holy shit, dude! I've been wanting to know what that. Movies called Demi yeah. Moore was in it. John Candy, Chevy Chase, Dan Aykroyd. Apparently his brother, too. Peter Aykroyd. The lesser known of the Aykroyds. Yeah, I guess like it's like a lesser. Ball yes, yeah. now I remember. That this is movie such a creepy was movie. creepy and gross, yeah. dude. <clears throat> one of the one of the last where they put on like costumes and it's like, you know what I mean? Yeah. I remember the dude like eating sausages or hot dogs. Oh, I forgot they were in this movie. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was Tupac. The Digital Underground yeah, and Tupac yeah, are yeah. in that movie? Yeah, yeah. Oh, man. That's crazy. That was the part that grossed me out when he was yes, eating. Yes. And eating look that. at his. Oh, my God. Look at his nose. Did you oh, ever notice that? Oh, it's a penis. <laughs> I never noticed that. Oh, my God, dude. I'm so glad. I. Oh, now I regret knowing what this is. Oh, wow. That was so fucking gross, and I watched it as a kid. Yeah, I don't. I, <laughs> uh, dude, if you want to be grossed out by a mo creeped out by a movie. Yeah. Watch Nothing But Trouble, apparently with uh, Digital Underground and Tupac doing a cameo. Oh, I remember this guy. He was in a bunch of 90s movies. Yeah, he was usually a bad guy or yeah, like yeah. a douche. Yeah. Is that Demi Moore? Yes, yeah, Demi Moore. No, that's not Demi Moore. That no, Demi Moore is stacked, bro. No, that's Demi Moore. That is not Demi Moore. Yes, it Look is. Look it up. I just did. She was on. She, she was, was on it? Yeah. I don't believe you. <sighs> All right, now I got to go back. Just hit back. No, it wouldn't, it wouldn't go back to, it was stuck in the images. See, Demi Moore. Did she get work done? Let me see some more of Demi Moore in that. Oh, no, one. this is finished Demi Moore. I don't want to see that sadness. Oh, this is early 90s Demi Moore. So early 90s had no work done. <clears throat> Demi Moore's not fake. She had them juggaloos from the beginning, no? No. Look at that. This is her young, see? She didn't She didn't have the titties. Oh, snap. Look, look at her with, with Bruce Willis. Oh, shit. Yeah. 
So strip tease Demi Moore was uh, sure that was way later. Plastic Demi Moore. That was way later. That was like after GI Jane and everything. But see, in Ghost, in Ghost, she looks like you know she's not exactly. She's younger. She had that boy-ish haircut, that androgynous haircut that people yeah. like. I think she just had a pretty face. I mean, you put that haircut on some fucking ghoul. It ain't going to look the same way. Oh, yeah. You got to have the right shaped head and everything for it. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then also the whole society <coughs> has to be attracted to uh, young boys with boobs. To you. <laughs> <laughs> so. And in the early 90s, people were. Because now she's like that. They had the. Uh, that uh, I was telling you guys the other day that that is one thing that I do like about the whole like um, model body positivity thing. Is that they don't all, I mean, there's some heifers, but they don't all look like fucking emaciated uh, basketball players. Uh, you know, just I, tall bitches with like flat asses. I think the peak of that was uh, Ally McBeal. You remember that? Yes. That was the peak. Fucking stick figure, Ally McBeal. Yeah, Ally, which she's actually married to um, uh, Harrison Ford. I forgot about that. <clears throat> she is or she was? She is. Oh wow! So this was the peak of and skinny this is, chick, skinny, skinny white yeah, chicks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it got, and then it got played out after that. Yeah, everybody was just looked at it and going like, "What? What is this?" Well, here's here's an interesting thing: is what what do you think? What do you think changed it from the super skinny is hot to to uh, what it became thicker? I think when women started when when uh when women started twerking mm -hmm. uh when twer twerking went outside of the black community mm -hmm. and the rest of, of of people saw that you know what it works a lot better with a caboose um and it it's you know it take it gets your attention the jiggle I think around that time that's when uh when both men and women started figuring out I think a, a booty is good because look at what it does to people. So in 96, 97, Clinton was president. He was the first time we didn't have, uh, what is it? He fixed the deficit or some shit. So first, yeah, yeah. We didn't. We had a, a surplus. A surplus for the first time. And so we were in a, uh, the dot-com bubble hadn't burst. So we're at the peak of. of uh, Whiteness. <laughs> well, well, just like like of, of uh, luxury or whatever. Every, you know what I mean? Right, and so it the whole point being is, skinny means you you don't need shit exactly. And then what happened? The dot com bubble, oh one, the nine eleven, all this stuff starts happening. People get scared. The economy goes to shit. So then it's like, what happens? Big asses, thicker women start becoming more attractive. Mm. You get stuff like the thong song and all that other. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, and then that's where it starts the beginning and turning. It's just like, oh, we like thicker women again. I think uh <clears throat> I think there was a uh, an epidemic of like of doggy style sessions with no meat in front of you mm -hmm. and people started noticing the difference going like I don't like fucking this bag of bones there needs to be something but but the majority that I can knead on the majority like of people cat. weren't getting it's just what is sold to you on you know television you know and I think it's some I mean, it's amazing because <clears throat> what weren't like in the fifties, they were also like forties and fifties, like full bodied women, Correct. like, and like in the nice curve. And in the twenties, the roaring twenties, it was all flappers and skinny, super skinny chicks. And then the seventies and eighties came around and what, what happened? 70s? Uh, it was, uh, seventies. Uh, what was it? Uh, so people were doing blow. That was eighties and nineties, eighties <laughs> and nineties. People started getting real skinny. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Doing a lot of yay. And then the 2000s went back to uh, thick again. Right. Yeah. Towards the end of the, I think. And we took a weird one now because now for the first time, it's just like where you're huge or what would be considered morbidly obese is now a lot of people are like, that's hot. That's standard of beauty. And <laughs> I'm not saying that that's what everybody finds attractive. I'm saying that's what's pushed. Mm. You know, I think it might have started now that I think about it, it was when Jay-Z got popular. And then he was starting to like rap in front of chicks shaking their ass. Boop beep boop beep boop. 
Well, no, I mean, people were doing that forever. You had, uh, for example, in the 90s, you had two live crew. Yes, but Jay-Z became the first superstar rapper. To do that? I think so. No, Tupac had, uh, Tupac, Tupac? <laughs> it's Tupac, and he had, Tupac had uh, the video, I Get Around, and it's a bunch of girls shaking in the video. Yeah, but it's almost, it's too busy. You got to have one shot of the chick, like, and then, and then you just point at it while you're rapping, like. Wreck effects. All I want to do is zoom, 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 and you boom, boom. Let's see a still of that. Okay. Is it really that? Uh, yeah. Damn it. Wanna All I want to do is have some fun. Do is uh, zoom, zoom. Rump sink. shaker. Rump shaker. All I want to do is zoom, 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 and you boom, boom. Rump springer. <laughs> Damn. Video. Pop up video. Yeah, see? They were like doing. Oh, like, yeah. Look at that. Uh, no, but she's like holding out like she's holding a cock in front of her. No, I mean, but they turn around and do it. It's because like it was certain things you couldn't just show on TV. There you go. See? Wow. Yeah. It's gorgeous. By the time people were like, it was, oh, oh I like big butts. Right, and just like she looked like one of those rap guys' girlfriends. <laughs> I mean, that's uh, you know what I mean. What did I tell you though? It was when I think twerking brought the booty into the into the limelight, and I think everybody else started realizing, yes, this is good. It's like watching Steph Curry shooting threes. It's like we should all start shooting threes now. But we we I think we embraced it because of the. I mean, the so rest of society embraced it because of the harder times. People like thicker women. Remember, we went over. You think so? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because because uh, evolution tells us that the thicker they are, they can probably handle childbirth mm. versus a skinny like Ally McBeal in the 1800s. If I put a baby in Ally McBeal, she's dead. <laughs> That's a death sentence. You got pregnant. You're Humble dead. brag. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, if I put my seed in that bitch, I'll tear that out. So. <laughs> yes, she'd die. Girl, you couldn't have but six or seven children. <laughs> Fuck out of here. <laughs> but if I put a baby in Serena Williams, she could have four of them. And they're all going to be At once. fucking powerful yeah. human beings. Yeah. Athletic. Yep. Full of conspiracies. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Who would I breed for uh, for optimum survival? <clears throat> I would probably be a UFC fighter. Okay. Um, I mean that's I, that's literally what I did. See, and so I went on uh, on uh, what's it called um, on national charts, and I looked up uh, who wa who won nationals in the year that I graduated for cheerleaders. Who was the head cheerleader? And I found that person. I was like, oh, and it was my wife. And so. I was like, that's oh, optimal you, you genetics, and then uh, I impregnated her. Works good. It works good as a team. Yep. Uh, it's cute. Yep. Small, uh, small like a flyer, but is a base. So it's like, oh, <laughs> shit. Shit. Because I, I was just like, you were a flyer, right? She's like, no, I was a base. I was like, you're tiny. She was like, yeah, but I was stronger. I was like, I like that. Mm. Now the children are gonna come from strong stock. Wait, isn't your uh, your father in law? He's a bodybuilder. No, I was a bodybuilder. I yeah, I tainted the genetics horribly. The the flat feet, the knees that go in, the you know. Yeah, but all you gotta do is this. <laughs> <laughs> but they got my smile. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Uh, I think uh, I think Ronda Rousey would give me too many problems. Yeah. No UFC, the no fighting ones. Yeah, it's got to be, dude. I'm trying to l make warriors. Yeah, I'm not trying to have. A then what you got to do is go for like like uh, Israeli army woman, like actual like trained and. Yeah, but the baby's not gonna come out with a fucking machine gun because she trained. You know, you're they're still gonna have to grow it's up. It's the mental fortitude. That's why UFC for look up uh, uh, Alexa Grasso. I think this is the woman that I would breed with. She's a, she's the new Mexican bantamweight champion. I'm Ron Burgundy. <laughs> <laughs> Her? Yeah. I mean, if, cute face. I mean, if we're going that way, I'm going with Amanda Nunez. Look at uh, look at over here. Like, 
click on that. Like her, her, her fucking her face is is beat up. Yeah. But she just finished fighting. Still pretty. And she still looks pretty. Yeah. No, well, if we're doing that, I'm going with Amanda. You're gonna um, Amanda. No, I think you're going with Amanda hug and kiss. Yeah, me and Amanda are gonna have beautiful Damn. babies, and and I'll be like. This is what she's after we have sex. Is me and her. Having, <laughs> it's me and her having sex. So she's, she's like, I'm beating that ass. Look like she's biting your fucking. Yeah. And I'm just trying to brow. I'm just trying to survive. <laughs> I feel like she gives me kisses on the forehead before I go to bed. Oh no! You know what? She's she would just be the equivalent of like a praying mantis. Uh huh. Well, once you're done inseminating her, she's gonna turn around and just fucking chew you up. And then I I just tell her take care of my babies. Oh, maybe Valentina Shevchenko, that girl right there. Yeah, yeah. Now, if, if we're gonna, if I'm gonna go with the uh, maybe like a swimmer or like an Olympic high jumper. How about Brittany Griner? Tall, lanky, likes to smoke weed. <laughs> yeah, I know. It'd, ha- it'd have to be somebody that's like at the top of the league, at the top of the food chain. What was it a uh, Becky Ham? Was it ha- Becky Ham? Was her name? Are you talking about soccer? Oh, that was soccer, yeah. Yeah, that's like from the nineties. NBA. I got news for you, dude. I don't think her uh her system works anymore. Okay, well. Like a Candace Parker. Let's see. Well let's see her her uh let's see her done up and dolled up. I wanna Candace. see her play ball. I don't give a fuck about that. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. What are you going to do? And they're taller than you. and Kids yeah. are going to be tall, I guess. Yeah. Why not? Um, you, you know who does that? Uh, Ocho Cinco. The does public, what? He, he picks people specifically for their athletic ability to get pregnant. He goes, I'll fuck a model, but I ain't getting them pregnant. Really? Yeah. yeah. So what? What? who does he have kids with? Like? Sports stars? Mm-hmm. Athletic, uh, uh, athletes. Well, what a hell of a way to look at it, you know? I mean, it's practical, but... Yeah, all those kids, uh, it's all athletes. Is your children... I mean, I guess as long as you love your children. Um, How many kids does Chad Johnson have? Eight. Eight children? Um, How many baby mamas does he have? Six. Seven kids reportedly by six different women. Holy fuck! Yeah, and he he said that he goes he goes. I'm trying to, you know, make I'll, a baseball team. I want athletes, and so he finds other athletes, and and then like I'll well, on top of that, he diversified his portfolio as far as personalities are concerned. And this is where he spends his money because he he doesn't do like gold chains and stuff. And in fact, in the NFL, he said all that was fake. He goes, I why am I? He goes. I, I'm not spending my money on that. That's oh, stupid. shit. That's Apparently pretty fucking cool. Super cheap. He's not cheap. He'd just rather spend it on his kids and right. his baby mamas, apparently. So he probably lives in like a, like, even if it's a big house, it's probably like, like, oh, I understand it. You know? Like, people think he's crazy, and I'm like, <clears throat> shit, that actually sounds very smart. I would, you know what I mean? If you, if, especially if you think of yourself in those terms, you're like, I want to have a bunch of kids. Mm. You know what I mean? Fuck yeah. Athlete. Uh, yeah, all athletes. Did I hear an extra vowel in there? Athlete. Is that how he said it? <coughs> no, athletes. that's from a uh, um, uh, black sheep. Uh, I think David Spade says that he's an athlete. He goes athlete. Did I hear an extra vowel in there? <laughs> Ocho Cinco says he only wants athletic kids. Uh, start basketball. Oh shit! Is currently in relationship with Sherelle Rosado, and their pair even sparked the engagement speculation earlier this year. Mm. What does that mean? Uh, he discussed his preference on women he wants to have children with in the new interview during his appearance in the episode. Bussin with the boys. Bussin. The former NFL star was asked about how it was like to be a father. The whole having multiple mothers thing. It doesn't seem like a difficult track host, Taylor Lewin said to that. Chad responded, you know what? I think about what I did. Everyone I had with is based on their DNA and athletic background. Damn. 
Yeah, he's creating an army. Further elaborating on it, it had nothing to do with how fine you were or how you looked. He had, I don't care anything about bad bitches and all that shit. If I wanted models, I don't want to fuck models. Uh, I, I want, don't want fucking models. I don't want fucking models. I want fucking athletes. Uh, what did you do in high school? Show, Show me, me some, some fucking, fucking tape. <laughs> Damn. Do a combine for these bitches. Yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you, yeah, yeah. You know what he's doing? Holy shit. He's starting his own management company with his children. Oh, He's going to manage all their athletic careers. Like, uh, what's that guy, LaMelo? Yeah, yeah, yeah. LaMelo Ball? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's going to manage all their careers. Hey, I mean, it's a long-term investment, but. What if that's what you did? Just like, I I just want the funniest women. I don't want these models. I just want the funniest bitches. (laughs) If you're funny, I'm going to impregnate you. (laughs) If you're hilarious, it's bring just, that fucking stank pussy over here. <laughs> it's just all these ugly kids, but great one-liners. <laughs> I just want amazing writers. <laughs> <laughs> I just want crowd work. I want bitches that can do crowd work. <laughs> you find out none of it translates. If I could, if I could fuck Big J Okerson and get him pregnant, I would. <laughs> uh, they all just come out shy with anxiety. <laughs> Well, I mean, I guess it's it's a great way to look at it in the sense of, like, that should be your best investment. Yeah. It's already some someone that you're going to love anyway. I mean, you I... Know, what better way to show it than by, like, ushering him into a, 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 a great life? I thought about that a little bit. Like, I was just like, there's things that w- whenever I dated a girl, I'm like, what are the things that I would like for my kids to have so like i was just like oh hopefully they get green eyes you know what i mean mm-hmm. uh, i never wanted to marry anybody or have kids or anybody like there was too like super petite because then i'm like if i have a son he's gonna be super fucking petite you mm-hmm. know what i mean what if he doesn't it, he's like a smaller version of me no but i heard that uh, uh petite women uh they get pregnant and all of a sudden they get regular figure Correct, but I'm saying though, like if you have if the a, kids uh, a little. smaller frame woman, and you have a child with them, the the child, not them necessarily, but the child will, will come out, you mm. know, thinner, skinnier. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I mean, there's also weight training. I mean, there is, but you know, trying to get that motherfucker to lift weights. Bone structure, that's important. <clears throat> it is. My, my, th- I remember I had two, di- my mom, the only thing she gave a shit about was make sure they're Catholic. That's all she ever cared about. She goes, I don't care. That's if- it? Yeah. Just make sure they're Catholic. My grandfather, on the other hand, said you can go uh, two shades darker, no, one shade darker or one shade lighter. That's mm. it. And I was like, okay. Hmm. You didn't, you didn't say anything about like looks? Catholic. And had to be preferably Mexican, mm. is what he told me. But I remember that. That was a weird conversation. 11 years old, him being like, she Damn, can be 11 years yeah, old. She can be a shade darker or she can be a shade lighter. But that's it. I was like, I was like, okay. He's like, you're going to have fun with the rest of them. I had no idea what fun meant at that time. My, my grandpa was just like, if she can handle this dip, <laughs> you can fuck all the black girls and all the albino women, <clears throat> but you better not marry one. I want regular babies. I guess so. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> well, I mean, I don't think uh, there's always going to be a cold place. Mm-hmm. So there's always going to be white people. There's always going to be where a place where it's hot as fuck. There's always going to be brown and black people. Mm-hmm. I don't think th- there's such a thing as like we're all going to be brown. I think if anything, we're all going to be gray at some point. Olive. No dicks. I'm gonna be or olive. vaginas. It, it it can be that way if and even if it's hot or cold, we just stay inside most of the time. Yeah, I guess so. You know what I mean? And also, you know, I mean, people go with who they feel comfortable with, and sometimes sharing a culture is the fastest way or the most surefire well, way to find someone that you, shares the same interests. It's just easier when it's like I, I get not necessarily the same culture, but same religion because how are you going to raise the children? Right. You know what I mean? So same uh and and when I say values, re- I guess. When I say religion, that means even if you're atheist. So if you're atheist, <clears> you better be with somebody else who's atheist cuz I don't see how it's going to work if you're atheist and they're 
Jewish. Or like all the woke people that I, that I consider that a religion. Okay, it's yeah, yeah. like the religion of niceties. Yeah, because <clears throat> I it, if it, like I we agree on nothing politically almost. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So that has no bearing on. I don't give a fuck what you believe politically. Right. Like Jesus wasn't Republican or Democrat. It's just like, do you worship the right God? That's all I know. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean it's it's true. You can't like you couldn't be with a Jehovah's Witness. I mean, I could, but my mom would disown me. Oh, all right. No, exactly. Which yeah. means that you couldn't. Yeah. Because yeah, you yeah. would never have the ball to stand up to her. <laughs> <laughs> I love her, Mom. <laughs> mom. Come on. Come on. Mommy, please. <laughs> I wanna fuck her forever. <laughs> forever and ever. <laughs> I want to dump in her mom. <laughs> <laughs> this is the woman that I want to dump in for the rest <laughs> of my life. <clears throat> oh my god, and that's what you do when you go to her dad and ask for a hand in marriage. Yeah, You're like I would just. This is the woman that I want to dump in for the rest of my life, sir. Yeah, I I, I asked him. We could. Thank you for making this come dumpster. <laughs> <laughs> I asked. I I remember asking my father in law to marry her. Yeah. 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 What do you say? He said yes, of course. But then he got really mad when he found out we had been living together. <gasps> is that old school, man? That shit is already. Well, no. He <laughs> first he said he was gonna kick my ass. Apparently, I was like, "Fuck." To your face? No. He we, sent a message. No, he told my wife. Right, I'm gonna whoop his ass for. Yeah, I'm gonna fuck him up. Yeah. If he fucks you, I'm fucking him up. I'm fucking him up. <laughs> and then he uh, fucks you. Now I'm fucking, fucking him. him. <laughs> oh. Uh, and then I had the conversation. And it was almost like, man, I wish you just would have whooped my ass. This you, It was worse. It was uncomfortable? One day you will have a daughter, and you will know exactly how I feel. And I was just like, okay. And now I have a daughter, and I'm like, I'll fuck him up. I'll fuck that dude up. You live with somebody? <laughs> oh, I'll no. fucking kill you. Wait, why? That's gonna, dude. I'm telling you, that's gonna be antiquated by the time we're like in our in our fifties and sixties. Yeah. Nobody's gonna bat an eye about like somebody. Nobody bats an eye now. Yeah, exactly. That's saying, but there's still the remnants of the old school people that that got mad at that. But it's not even old school. It's just that your daughter is you're always gonna look at as a child, and it's like, you know, fuck you, you greasy, fucking disgusting motherfucker. Get your hands off my little girl. You yeah. know what I mean? And yeah. then you're all like, uh, uh, uh. oh, yeah, I was doing nasty shit. All the time. <sighs> yeah. Anyway, fathers, be good to your daughters because one day they're going to be sucking a mean dick. It's it's a lot of, I think a lot of it's just how they see you treat their mom. Yeah? Yeah. And the only thing that sucks now is if me and her in an argument, I'm not in an argument with my wife. I'm in an argument with my wife and my daughter. And who's your giving, daughter. Giving me fucking attitude. And with my wife, I can go cold and be like, well, fuck you then. How about that? I'll just be give you tra silent treatment. It's like, how about that? And then my daughter, I can't do that. And then she's like giving me more sass and I'm like. More lip? Yeah. And I'm just like, stop doing that. Don't do that. And I don't know how to, to handle it. Because mm. one's conditional <clears throat> love and the other one's unconditional love. Yeah. And it's like, well, I'm going to do whatever it takes to make this right. Yeah. And so. I feel like she knows that and it fucking sucks because if she gets mad at me, it's not like my son's going to my wife and being like, well, fuck you, mom. <laughs> <laughs> they no, both had a conversation about if we ever split up who they would be with. We didn't ask them. They told us. Mm. Oh, yeah, we would be with mom. And I'm like, all right, nobody needed to know any of that. We all knew that. Why did you bring that up? Why do you think we're getting divorced? What? Just for that, I'm going to drag this out in court. Just for that, I'm beating the shit out of all of you right now. <laughs> Everybody forgets that you can beat them up at some point. <laughs> <laughs> all right, hey, I think uh, Stupid is here. Uh, how much time? Uh, we've done an hour, right? An hour, yeah. All right. Uh, thank you guys so much for uh, listening. Um, Y'all keep uh, checking it out, man. Um, I'm just, I've been writing a lot of new material, and hopefully by the end of the year, I'm going to have something to put out uh, for you guys to uh, entice you to come out and see me. Other than that, uh, thank you guys so much. Uh, uh, we'll see you next time. Take it easy. Bye.